Hey, how's it going today? Great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Now, we are here to talk about a number of things. The biggest one is God's Not Dead, We the People. You play Rebecca McKinnon. What can you tell us about your character in the film? Yeah, you know, Rebecca is um, an amazing mom. She's a homeschooler. She loves the Lord. She has two kids. Um, She runs a co-op, which is just when a bunch of parents get together and help um, teach the kids at the same time. So we have so much in common. We homeschool our kids. And so, um, it was really fun getting to play, you know, such a great character. So, so I have to ask you, obviously, and I know you've done acting in the past, obviously, but, but music is what people really know you for. I mean, that has been where your career is. Um, what was it that attracted you to this film that made you want to dive into it? Yeah. You know, I, I think partly it was, you know, just, wow, how fun to have an experience like this and do something sort of outside the realm of, like you said, what I normally do, but, um, I wouldn't have just said yes to any movie. This one really, um, I don't know, uh, especially the times that we're living in when I read the script, I was just so inspired by, um, the theme of the film and the message of the film and again, the character. So, um, it was an easy yes for me for sure. Yeah. And, you know, the movie and I don't want to spoil it because I have seen it and it's a phenomenal film. Uh, but the movie is really about standing up for what is right and and doing that when it can be difficult and challenging and even painful. What are some of the themes that for you, because you mentioned, obviously, you, you read the script, you saw it, you were interested. You wouldn't say yes to just any movie, but there was something about this that drew you in. What what did it do, at least for you, in terms of maybe showing you or teaching you something maybe you hadn't thought about in some of the issues that the film deals with? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it, it aligns a lot with my values. And just like you said, the idea of standing up for what's right and standing up for our freedoms and um, something that, you know, I could I could hear people say, well, I don't homeschool. I don't have any desire to. Why would I watch this movie? The film is about homeschooling, but the film is really about freedom. And I think at some point, it's easy for us to think, oh, well, this issue doesn't matter to me, or I agree with, you know, whatever's going on, um, the government may be trying to enforce over here. So I'm not worried about it. At some point, something's going to come down the pike that does upset you, does bother you, and, and is something that you are um, concerned about. And so I encourage people to watch this film and sort of insert whatever that thing would be for you into the slot of homeschooling, because the film is really about what are our, you know, God given rights as humans, and especially as people who live in America. I mean, it is still the place where people come to because it's the last bastion of freedom. And it's not looking like it's going to stay that way for very long. So we have, I believe, um, you know, a, a responsibility, especially as believers, to make our voices heard and to know what's going on and be involved in the ways that we can. And I think for too long, we've just sort of been like, oh, I'm not into politics. Well, this is your country. So <laughs> maybe you should be, you know, but yeah. I'm obviously a little passionate about about that. <laughs> you know, I mean, listen, it's I have a six year old and a nine year old and my nine year old is really starting to understand things. Right. And so we were in the car today on the way to school and I was talking to her about America and that no country is ever perfect. No country is because we're all human beings and we have sin. And but that this is the, the most amazing country in the world. And we should be so grateful. I said, look, we're driving to school right now and I'm taking you there. And I was telling her about Afghanistan and what's happening there and how, you yeah. know, there, there are girls in some parts of the world who don't get to have an education. There are people who don't right. get to go to church on Sundays. Right. Um, and right. it's so easy to take that for granted. And that's why I love what you said about the freedom piece too, because it's very easy to say, well, I don't need to get involved in that because I don't care about that issue or that doesn't affect me, but you're so right. Eventually when freedom erodes, it will, something will affect you right at some point. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's where, you know, just in what's really going on in the world right now, a lot of us have have broken down is because it's like, well, that doesn't bother me or this is, doesn't affect me. It's like, well, when when will it? What are you going to do? And at that point, it may be too late, you know, and so um, and the idea of homeschooling being threatened is not um, a fairy tale. I mean, even when we made this film to now, um, since then, France has banned homeschooling. Several Europe- European nations has made it, have made it illegal. Wow, I can't speak. And, you know, it, it, it's just, it's something that we need to be um, 
fiercely protecting. So just our right as parents to make those choices for our kids. That's not the government's decision, you know? Yeah. And it's happening all over the world. To your point, I mean, I used to cover stories about this in other countries and think, oh, wow, you know, I hope that never happens here. And Mm -hmm. if you don't protect freedoms, they can very easily erode. We Again, you just mentioned examples around the world with homeschooling in particular, where we have seen that happen. What would you say in light of our conversation about this, what would you say is your big takeaway for the audience, right? Like, what do you want people to be thinking and feeling at the end of watching God's Not Dead, We the People? Yeah. You know, I think for me, uh, especially that last scene, you know, with David, it's so inspiring. I, uh, without giving anything away, I feel like it reminded me what a great nation America is or could be or was. And it, it reminded me sort of, that's right. You know, this is the way things work that we, the people are, are you know, the government does not exist, um, you, you know, to, to make our lives better or, or I don't know, give us things. <laughs> we are, the government exists to represent us. And we forget that so often because they feel like big brother and the way that they sort of um, have just acted for years is that they control us, but that's not how it works. And when you really read our founding documents, it, it is like mind blowing. And why aren't we, you know, being taught that or remembering that or whatever. And so for me, I'd love people to just walk away inspired, remembering, especially Americans, remember this great country that we've been given, um, that's been fought for, but then also for people to ask questions like, like we've been talking about already, what are the things that that matter to me? What are the things that if they were taken, um, if someone said, I can't go to church anymore, would that upset me? Would that move the needle in my life? And so asking those questions and then asking, how can I get involved on a local level? I think we've placed so much emphasis on who's president or even who's governor. And we don't know our school board and we don't know, you know, our county commissioner. That's where yeah. it's all happening at the local, le- yeah, at the school board yeah. level, and nobody even thinks about it. It's so true. Literally, how this we were set up was, you know, for those things to matter and for us to have a voice in those things, and um, you know, those are also the things that affect our daily lives the most. And so, um, just to to remind believers, especially in America, like know what's going on and get involved and and um, see how the Lord wants to use you. So I have to ask you a little bit about music because your history is so interesting. You were born in New York City, is that that's correct, right? Yep. Did you live in New York City for a long time after like your childhood? No, um my parents got married, got saved and then had me and they were in the theater world and so having a new baby and being new believers and trying to do you know life in that dark world was tough. So they moved like 30 minutes away to Princeton, New Jersey for, um, until I was seven. So we still went to church in the city and were there all the time, but, um, we lived in New Jersey till I was seven and then moved to Orlando. So I grew up in (laughs) Disney's backyard (laughs) uh, until I moved to Nashville at, uh, just at graduation college. So, so All right, cool. That's that's an interesting background. I li- I live just outside of New York, so that's why I was curious. And oh, so, cool. so you, at what point did you discover that music was going to be your thing? That this is something that you. It sounds like your family obviously had that background, but for you, when did you start to realize that? Um, I think I was in high school when I really kind of set the path that uh, you know started walking down this path. Um, before that, I did a lot of ballet. Um, really wanted to dance for the New York City Ballet, and then a lot of theater, and then even some like pop music that is embarrassing to remember. Um, But (laughs) I was in high school when I really felt called to, you know, lead worship and write songs that glorified the Lord and, um, and, and made my first album uh, (laughs) that no one will ever hear when I was 19. And then I ended up moving to Nashville when I graduated and, and made my first Real album. <laughs> now, I want, so, now I want to hear the first album. Now I I'm, know. <laughs> you have to like release it in some way. I've um, seen it on Amazon from time to time. I'm like, where did people dig this up? And they're trying to sell it. I'm like, whatever. It's like two copies, you know. Oh, oh, it, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Well, so so you've had this long career in music now. What what has been the most rewarding part of that? Because you get to do it's a really interesting first of all, it's a tough industry. 
A, but B, it's a it's an interesting mission field too because of the industry it is. So just talk about that a little bit, the maybe the rewards, the challenges of it. Yeah. Um it's been 14 years now that I've been doing music full time and it's it's been amazing. I mean, I think from the very beginning God opened doors that I didn't expect him to open. And, you know, everyone was like, well, don't expect this and don't think this is going to happen because you're a female in Christian music and those things never happen. And <laughs> and then those things happen. And so life kind of moved at a really fast pace for a long time. And um, personally as well, my husband and I met and got married, like right as things were getting crazy for me career wise. And so um, there's a bit of the first 10 years that felt like a blur. Um <laughs> But I, I think that, you know, God has been so faithful and just allowing, um, like you said, the music to go places where I, I couldn't go. I mean, I've had stories of people. There was a girl once who came up to me, this was years ago, and she heard one of my songs on a TV show and said, I'm not here for a picture or autograph. I just want to tell you that I heard, I heard your song. I liked it. I looked it up. I found your album and I came to know the Lord. And it was one of those moments of like, wow. okay, God what are you doing? Because I write Christian music. Like I'm not trying to cross over, but God is able to take, you know, what we offer him and, and multiply it. And so, um, it's been amazing to see how he's done that over the years. That has to be the most incredible feeling to hear somebody say, because of something you did, like, it's not just like, Oh, I, you know, went and turned my light switch on, or I went to the grocery store. It's like, I get (laughs) eternity. You know, I, I've inherited that because I, because of your music, that has to be really incredible. So amazing. So, so incredible. Those stories definitely keep you going also, you know, just like, okay, I'm still doing this, Lord. (laughs) Well, and now you're acting even more so that, which is exciting. And and this film, God's Not Dead, We the People. I'm so excited for people to see it. It's a great movie. I appreciate you taking the time and coming on today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, go see the film. You guys will love it. It's so good. 